Thanks for joining the show today. My guest is an old friend from my radio days. His name is John Cruz. He took his local radio show that started on KPQ and has turned it into a well-heard show that's heard through many stations throughout our region and then also now has a national radio show. But we'll get into that. Right now, I just want to welcome my friend to the show. Thanks for being here, John. Lisa, it's great to see you again. It is nice to see you. I, uh, I'm i just so curious what everyone's been up to the last year or so since I've bumped into you anywhere around town. And, um, you know, you look great. You're doing all these great things uh, as usual with your show. And it's just nice to see you again. Well, it goes both ways. And, you know, it's funny how we've all coped with the pandemic in different ways. <laughs> yes. For sure. Okay, so let's talk about, um, I want to introduce people, uh, you to people who are watching the show who maybe don't know anything about you coming into uh, the radio uh, program that you host now, both the regional one and the national one. And just you from a career point of view, did I'm sure you never thought you'd go from the work you did to now hosting this national radio show. So tell us a bit about yourself as you came into the radio scene many years ago, 2008. Sure. So back in in the 1990s, uh, I'd gotten out of the military and I joined the Wenatchee Police Department. And I'd been working for the Wenatchee Police Department about, oh, seven years and I made the rank of sergeant. And a couple years after that, I became the public information officer for the department. So I was talking to the folks at KPQ on a regular basis and, you know, telling them stories about what was going on with the police department. At the same time, I started out as an outdoors writer back in about 2001. So I was writing for publications like Fishing and Hunting News, and and I really got the writing bug. So I I started writing for more publications that were regional and a couple national publications. And in 2003, Eric Granstrom, uh, who was the programming director at KPQ, decided he wanted to start an outdoors radio show because he loves the outdoors, as you know. Mm -hmm. But... He was the only one at the station that knew anything about the outdoors at all. So he reached out to me, this is back in 2003, and says, hey, uh, would you like to be part of our radio show? And I'm like, well, I've, I've got zero experience at radio except for talking to you on the phone. Just come on in. Same we'll, we'll, show you, <laughs> we'll show you how to talk into the microphone. We'll, uh, we'll show you how to use the audio software program, Cool Edit. And if you have any questions, just ask a DJ. So <laughs> that... That 30 minute session was my formal broadcast training, and I would Did you do it live. In, what's that? Did you do it live, or were you just doing it pre recorded? I, I would come so, in at 6 30 in the morning before I went to work, and I would record like a little three minute segment about a place to go, or a little technique, or a tactic, or things like that. And that went on for four years until 2007. And then in 2007, uh, Eric left, and Steve Hare who was a news director, says, uh, we need somebody to do the show. Would you want to do it live? And I was terrified. <laughs> I was absolutely terrified I mean, at the thought of it. Live. I did my radio show live, because that's what you do on KPQ. And right. I was interviewing someone like, you know, that I was working with their time frame. Uh, and then we'd play it later. But I mean, live is, radio live is a little, I think must be a little easier, if easier is a fair term, than television live. Uh, but Radio Live is intimidating. It is. It is. And sometimes sometimes the feedback you get isn't great. I still vividly remember, because I didn't understand anything about hard breaks. I would just talk, and eventually the board operator would say, we've got to make a hard break, and we'd go. Well, one time, I was talking away, chattering about who knows what, and we went over on the fruit pot frost forecast, which is a big deal for the orchardists. And a call comes in. And, you know, the board operator says, hey, we got a call for you. Hi, caller. What do you want to talk about in the outdoors? I want you to shut up so they can put on the fruit frost forecast. <laughs> Pretty humbling experience as a young radio show host. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll teach you not to go over, huh? Uh, yes, it did. <laughs> well, so you did that. You did, the, you did the bits that they aired, like the tips and things you said. And then when did you start doing the first live show? Was that in 2008? That was in 2007, and it was around the same time you were doing yours. As you remember, uh, Dan Conway, who was the the station manager at the time, 
he brought in all sorts of local programming for the afternoons. You had your show. I had my show. Mike McNaughty had his. I will freely admit, mine was probably the worst. I, I, no, I, I didn't really, I think you have to find your voice. And I think you found yours a lot faster than I did. I decided to emulate like William Shatner in terms of enunciation, which was really a bad idea for radio. This week on Northwestern Outdoors <laughs> Radio. <laughs> it's amazing they kept me on the air, but they did. And uh, eventually I got a little bit better until they canceled all of our shows. <laughs> um, <right. laughs> well, and that, that's the thing that I feel like, um, that KPQ allowed us to fail. And I don't mean because, you know, it was, a, a, I mean, the radio station's been there for, I don't know how many years now, it was 90 something when we were there. And right. it has really great programming. And, but they gave the, the locals like us an opportunity to, to do our best and fail along the way and kind of figure it out. So when did you feel at what point in your hosting, did you start to feel like you're getting a hang of it and lose the William Shatner and just be John Cruz? I would say about a year into it. And that's, of course, when the recession hit. And I remember Dan had to bring all of us in and say, love the show. We don't have any money to pay you the, the small amount we're paying you. But what he said to me was, John, you've got something unique here with an outdoors radio show. You should consider syndication. So he literally had to sit me down and explain how syndicated radio works and that, you know, you call up stations, you, you ask them to carry your show, you don't charge them for it. You make your money by finding sponsors. And the more stations you have, in theory, the more your show is worth. And that's how syndicated radio works. And so he explains it. And so he says, I'm going to help you out. We're going to put you on our sister station, uh, which was the sports station at the time, in addition to KPQ. And then I called up uh, KNCW out of OMAC. And what made they you call said, that one of all? What, what, what made you decide to call that one first? It was close. And I, I already covered a lot of, because it was North Central Washington, and I already covered a lot of stuff up there. And I didn't know any of these people that I'm calling. They were all cold calls. But, but he took a chance, and a few other stations took a chance. And all of a sudden, I, I was syndicated. And it I was, remember asking you, like, John, how are you doing this? Like, what are you doing? And you're like, I don't know, Lisa. <laughs> I don't well, know. We're just picking I, up the phone. And yeah. I really think that the reason I had success definitely wasn't because of God-given talent. His rush, you know, talent on loan by God. Yeah, I didn't have a whole lot of talent loaned to me by God as a radio broadcaster. But um, what I did have is I was filling a niche that wasn't being filled. So at the time I was doing outdoors radio, there was two shows in Seattle. There was two or three shows in Portland but the rest of the Northwest was wide open. There was one other show on the Oregon coast and that was it. So when I started calling and as the show quality got better and, you know, programming directors were, you know, really reinforcing the hard breaks and, and the things I needed to know to, to pre-record and send out a show like this, more and more stations started picking it up and it just grew steam and it just filled a void that, you know, needed to be filled. And so now you're in that particular Northwestern Outdoors radio is on, started on KPQ and I wrote it down 67 other stations now. Right. The KPQ, they're still our flagship station, which we mm -hmm. proudly say when we can on the show. That's great. Okay. I'm going to take a hard break here, John. And All when right. we come back, we're going to talk about your national radio show and the kind of things you cover and what people can expect when they listen. I can't wait. We'll be back in just a moment. We're back. We're talking with John Cruz, my friend from the radio days, starting at KPQ back in 2007, eight for both of us. And now uh, that show that started on KPQ, Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Got that right, right? Yes, you did. Uh, is now on 67 other stations. Now I want to talk with you about your national radio show. So people know they can listen to your show on KPQ. And there's other stations um, that they can listen. But you also, how did that lead to your national show? And, and now when you were doing the KPQ show, you were, still, you were still working. You hadn't retired, right, when you started it? Correct. Uh, so fast forward to like 2014, 2015, uh, the, the regional show had really grown. And I had some good sponsorships. 
And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm getting close to retirement as a police, you know, as a police officer to the point where I can retire. Not everybody retires at the minimum age, but my goal was to basically, you know, walk from that career into radio broadcasting full time as my second career. And I was approached by the publisher of North uh, Northwest Sportsman magazine, and he actually published three other magazines as well that were all outdoors related: California Sportsman magazine. Uh, Alaska Fishing Hunting Journal and, and another one. And he's like, I've got a proposal. I'd like to buy your show, Northwestern Outdoors. I said, it's not for sale. I'm not going to do it. But I'm thinking of launching a national show. And so we came to an agreement where he would pay me um, money based on how many stations I was on with the nat national show. But there was, there was a twist. You know, he wanted to sell advertising, obviously. And so he's like, 50% of the content has to be content we provide, which are going to be people that are, you know, buying ads. You get editorial control, the other 50%. So we launched the show in 2016, and we went a year on that relationship, and we grew it up to 50 stations. And, and it wasn't bad. Um, you know, sometimes it was difficult, given the sponsors I had, to make them interesting. I still remember I had a budget rent-a-car. It's like, I don't know how you stretch budget rent a car into a fishing or hunting interview for 10 minutes, but by golly, we did it. <laughs> you would interview, you would interview, you would include them within your show. It wasn't just the ads. You had to make them part of your content. Yes. So we, I would have a meeting once a month over at, at you know, where the publisher was. And they would say, okay, here's the, the sponsors we want you to interview this month. And so they would, they would give me a list. And it'd basically be two of their sponsors per show, and then I'd have two of my guests per show. So uh, the, the budget rent-a-car one was actually budget rent-a-car of Kodiak Island, Alaska. And the woman had never been on the radio, didn't really want to be on the radio. And what do you have to talk about? Well, we've got a 10% discount for veterans. Anything else? Nope, that's about it. It's like, oh boy. So <laughs> I ended up researching a do-it-yourself trip with a rent-a-car you could do on Kodiak Island and all the great places you could fish. And so I kind of carried that conversation for 10 minutes, but that was just an example. The, the relationship ended, um, you know, and it was, a, it was a friendly split a year later. And then the show really grew because I was able to have complete editorial control and I could reach out to guests that, you know, no offense, are a little bit more compelling than just somebody who's sponsoring an ad. Right. And, and so that show really took off. I've been working with Talk Media Network, and they've distributed the show by satellite. Uh, they now handle affiliate relations. And, and I can't believe this, but five years into it, we're on 124 stations in 28 states. Wow. Who would, who would have thunk, right? A couple of people <laughs> like us could make, make it in the bigs. <laughs> the William Shatner, you know, you lost the William Shatner. Look how good it got. Well, and I've listened to your show too, and I always think it's um, it's so important that our personalities come through because you know some people um, might listen to the show but not necessarily be watching it simultaneously. They're busy, they're doing things, they're sure. making dinner or you know driving down the road listening to it through the website or something. And so your personality does come through, and I feel like you have such a wealth of information in the outdoor. Uh, market but also you I've I feel like you are really good at making the guests feel comfortable about what they're doing because not everybody some people are really good at what they do and you're having them on to talk about it but right you must find as well that they're nervous and then they and then all of a sudden the 20 minutes or hour or whatever the timeline is is over and they're thinking wow that was kind of fun and that was pretty easy so that's you doing that and you're you're so right about you have to make the guests feel at ease because you're right when they're really nervous or, or just downright frightened. Sometimes it shows, you know, whether it's on television, whether it's on radio. So when you can put that person at ease, especially with, with my show where it's pre-recorded 99% of the time. And I, I let them know it's pre-recorded. There's do overs along the way. If, if you want to do over, just say, I want to do over, you know, and, and uh, sometimes I'll intentionally mess up just to make them feel good. It's like, Oh, I messed up. I'm going to take my do over. You can take yours later. And, you know, just little things like that. It helps. And, and it, you're right. Cause you want to bring out the best in every guest that you have. You have them on for a reason, whether it's to, to tell a story or to share some sort of technique or tactic or, you know, to sometimes tell their story. 
And, and if you can put them at ease, it's just so much better, as you know, than if they're, they're wooden and nervous and stilted. Sometimes people will ask me prep questions or what I plan to ask them. And I always say, you know, you're the expert. That's why you're coming on. It's my job to learn about you and know what to ask and just treat it like a conversation. And I think that people who come on there expecting to have a good conversation or hoping to have a good conversation, I'm always glad when they feel like they did. So uh, let's take a break. And when we come back, I think it's fair that we share exactly what it is you talk about on your show since you know we're talking about outdoors, but let's talk about a few examples and um, how it relates to these times now. All right. Okay, we'll be back with John Cruz in just a moment. We're back talking with John Cruz. He's the host of a couple of radio shows. I'm gonna let him say out loud what they are so I don't mess them up because there's two. I guess I could look at my notes, right? We just talked about it being okay. Northwestern Outdoors Radio is heard on KPQ and 67 other stations throughout the region. Yes. The region. And then American Outdoors Radio, 124 stations at your national radio show. So at, toward the end, we'll tell people where they can hear it. But let's share a bit of the content. What is it that you, we know it's an outdoor show, but give us an example of what people would hear if they tune in with you. So Northwestern Outdoors Radio is a regional show, and it covers uh, what I like to say, everything's within a day's drive of Wenatchee. So it, it covers outdoor recreation in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana. And so we cover, of course, fishing and hunting. That's a big part of it. Uh, but we'll also cover conservation issues. We'll cover destinations. And we'll cover a lot of what I call uh, non-consumptive outdoors recreation. For example, we, we just did a segment about bicycling the route of the Hiawatha. And if you've never done that bike trail before, at the border of Idaho and Montana. It's a 16 to 20 mile ride that you just simply have to do. It's one of the most incredible experiences you'll ever have. So we actually have a lot of female listeners to that show and they, they tell me all the time, I tune in not because I'm a fisherman or a fisher person or a, a huntress, I tune in because I really like the other things you cover. And so we try to have a little bit of that for everyone. With America Outdoors Radio, much more of a hook and bullet show, as we say. So it is fishing, it is hunting. We throw in conservation issues as well, uh, but that's much more of a hook and bullet show nationwide. And are these places in the national show, are they places you've necessarily been? Uh, no, not at all. They're people, they're people sharing these other opportunities and places to travel? Well, it, it's kind of interesting. So for example, this week, uh, we're talking to the chairman of, of Bass, which uh, is holding the Bassmaster Classic in Fort Worth, Texas. And that's like the Super Bowl of bass fishing. Yes. So we have a discussion about that that's happening next month. Then we talked to a professional bass angler uh, named Randy Blockett, who's got a YouTube channel where he shares not just fishing tips, but just the whole uh, behind the, the curtain look at the professional bass fishing industry. It's fascinating, really down to earth guy really primitive raw videos, but he puts them out every day and it's great stuff. My favorite interview this week is with a, a gal um, who reached out to me and she actually, you would probably want her as a guest yourself. Uh, she is battling cancer and she's 16 years old. She's from Santa Fe and uh, Santa Fe, Texas. She found out that she had cancer in October She's in for treatment in January, and a huge side effect, she gets that flesh-eating bacteria disease. Oh, wow. So she's going through all this, and she uh, there's a foundation out there, and I don't know if it's Make-A-Wish or another one, what do you want to do? She kind of wanted to go hunting, but they, she's told she can't do that. So instead of doing something herself, she says, I'm going to start my own foundation, and it's going to be about taking kids with cancer hunting because we have a, a ranch in West Texas, and that's what I want to be able to do. So we get, that is an incredible story. That's one where I'm almost in tears just interviewing her. It's so good. Yeah, I'll definitely want her number when we're done. All right, fair enough. I did an interview on tour last year. Well, I guess it's been two years ago now when I was in, because um, I traveled, uh, Town Toyota sponsors me to travel the country, and last two years I pulled a trailer next one where I'm going to stay in Airbnb. So that's another story. And um, 
And uh, so we, I was in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I, I think um, it's called Project Healing Waters. And they yes. were veterans with PTSD. Are you familiar? And it's very, like very much fly so. fishing. And I spent a day on the water with two guides, with these fishermen who told their stories. And just incredible, just incredible yes. to get to spend time with people in the outdoors and to get to get, get to be part of their lives for just a little bit of time. So for your line of work, John, when you're talking about being in the outdoors, I, I don't talk about COVID a whole lot on this show unless there's a silver lining. And I would think the silver lining is that your job requires thought and time in the outdoors. What better place was there to be over the last year and four, five, six months now? Oh, you are not kidding. And I think the toughest part of COVID was when we first went into it and Washington state literally shut everything down. And, and as a, a person who writes a newspaper column and as an outdoors radio show host, I'm trying to get people outside because, you know, I know this is a safe activity when you're hiking or fishing by yourself or, you know, with a family member. And, and every time I go ahead and record something before it even gets on the air, nope, that, that state park's been shut down. Nope, that, you know, those federal lands have been shut down. Nope, you can't go fishing. And, and it was like, oh my gosh. Well, fast forward a couple months later, the world realizes, well, these are good activities to do. And people are cooped up. They can't do things they normally do. And, and as you're probably well aware, the outdoors industry has soared. More people have been camping. More people have bought RVs. More people have bought boats, have taken up fishing, have gone back to hunting than we've ever seen in recent years. So that is the one silver lining of COVID is that so many more people have discovered the outdoors. And I'm hoping it's a trend that will continue even as we emerge from COVID. It's really good work you do. I mean, I, it must be... Like I said, it, during these times, it's probably the best job, the best job to have. You know, I tell people all the time I have the best job in the world. At least I did until I met the guy whose job it is to write about soaking in hot springs all over the Northwest. <laughs> he has the best job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably true. <laughs> well, we just have a minute left. So I just want you to tell people where they can find your show, how they can listen, whether it's the regional show here and they're looking for a day excursion or it's a national show like you were just describing? Well, if you're listening in the Wenatchee area, you can just tune in to 560 KPQ, Saturday mornings between 10 a.m. and noon, Sunday mornings between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. If you don't live in the Wenatchee Valley, just go to our website to look for stations near you. You'll find that at northwesternoutdoors.com and americaoutdoorsradio.com. We've also got Facebook pages with lots of info and contests and giveaway. So be sure to like and follow those too. 